Hey guys, in this lesson, I show you how to create a custom cursor using ActionScript 3.0. Since this is my first official ActionScript 3.0 tutorial, I thought I would keep it pretty simple. My goal here is to introduce you to ActionScript, assuming that you're a beginner to it, and then walk you through the steps on how to make this custom cursor work for you. Now, along the way, I will be explaining to the best of my ability what the action script is doing. That's pretty much my goal for this lesson. So while it's simple, it should be informational, especially if you're new to action script. So to get started, please open up a new action script 3.0 document. Next, I want you to make a custom cursor that you'll be using for this project. Now, your cursor can be any design you wish. What would a custom cursor be used for? Well, let's say for instance, you are designing an interactive website in Flash. You might want your cursor to reflect the theme you're using for your website. Or if you're making a game, you might also want a custom cursor for your user to have when playing in your game. So design your cursor, and once you're done, we'll need to convert it into a movie clip symbol. So I'll just highlight the entire thing, hit F8, and now we can convert it into a symbol. Now the name of your symbol isn't a huge factor when it comes to the action script portion. However, it's good to come up with a good naming structure right away for both your movie clips and your instances, which I'll explain what instances are in a moment. And sometimes it's best to name your symbols to correspond to your instances. That way everything stays organized. So what I recommend for this is to name this cursor underscore MC. The underscore MC dictates that it's a movie clip. And again, that has no real purpose other than for your own benefit. So you can go through, look at the names and know that what you defined is a movie clip. So once you have defined it and set movie clip as the type, we will click OK. Now the next step is to give this symbol an instance name. The instance name is what the action script will pull when it is compiling. And it's also what you'll refer to in the action script. So again, for this demonstration, I will name the instance name the same as the movie clip, just so there's no confusion. Once you have named your instance, we need to make a new layer for the action script. Now, with action script 3.0, you cannot place action script on the objects. And the reason why I say this is because it was different in action script 2.0. I know ActionScript 2.0 is a bit old now, but I know there's probably people out there who still use it. So I just thought I would point that out. And the reason for this is Adobe or the developers thought it'd be best that all ActionScript be contained on one or multiple ActionScript layers as opposed to the objects for organizational purposes. So that it was easier, for instance, if you opened up a project that someone else worked on to find the ActionScript. Just a little info there. But anyway, once you have your new layer, which we'll call Actions, we will go to Window, Actions, or hit F9. Now, making sure you're on the Actions layer, we are going to start inputting our code so that we can create this custom cursor. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pull in this instance of this movie clip. So to do that, we will type out stage dot add child. And then in parentheses, we will put the name of that object, which in this case was cursor underscore MC. And then we'll close that parentheses off and put a semicolon. Now we need to disable the mouse and add in an event listener. So cursor, which is um, underscore MC, which is our movie clip, dot mouse enabled, 
equals false. And then a semicolon. Hit enter and put cursor underscore MC dot add event listener. An event listener is basically a, um, a command that's going to let ActionScript listen for an event. And we're going to define that event below here. So add event listener, parentheses, event dot enter frame, because we want this to occur right when we, when we enter the frame. And now we are going to define a function. This event is listening for this function. So we'll put FL, just to name it, to give it a definition here, custom mouse cursor. Now, you can name this, again, whatever you want. It's like an instance name. You're basically naming a function. You can name the function whatever you want. It's just Flash seems to, at least when you look at some of the help files, it seems to put fl underscore and then the name of the function. Again, it's kind of like putting an underscore mc. Just kind of helps you look at the text and figure out what you're looking at. And as far as custom mouse cursor, you can definitely shorten that. Again, I'm just kind of spelling this all out in as much detail as I can, just so that you get the hang of this. Okay, I'll double space here just to give us some room and to organize this a bit. We now need to define this function that we just specified. So function fl underscore custom mouse cursor. It's going to be an event. And you'll notice once I put that code in that Flash actually has imported that command so that the action script knows what's going on now. A function is always defined in brackets. So we need to create a bracket and if we hit enter, you'll notice that Flash closes the bracket off automatically for us. That's because whenever you open up a bracket or a parentheses, you always have to close it at some point. So Flash just makes it easy for us and closes it off so that we don't forget. So now for the function itself, we need to define that the movie clip that we brought in is going to mimic that of the stage mouse, of our stage cursor, the default cursor. So, cursor underscore mc dot x equals stage dot mouse x, semicolon. So that's defining the horizontal properties for the mouse cursor. We now got to do the same for the Y properties. So cursor underscore MC dot Y equals stage dot mouse Y semicolon. That will end the function. So that function is now complete. When doing more advanced programming, you might have functions that go on for quite a while and have multiple bracket sets. But for this case, it's a very simple function. The final thing we need to do is hide the mouse, the default mouse from view. So mouse dot hide and then two parentheses and a semicolon. And that should be all the code you need to create this custom cursor for your project. So let's test it out. First, you can check the syntax and make sure that there's no compiler errors. If you click this, it'll go through and you can click on compiler errors to see if there are any warnings or errors and it appears there are none. So everything should probably and hopefully check out. Once you've done that, go to control, test movie, test, or control enter. So now, once you place your cursor into the window, your custom cursor should take over the function of that cursor. And as you can see, 
it does for me. If it doesn't work for you, make sure you go back and look at all of your code. Make sure you have no errors or typos. That is very common. Make sure that you define the instance properly. Make sure once you define the function that the same name applies when you call the function and then when you define the function, make sure that that same function name is the same for both of these. Also, you'll notice that whenever I put in a command like false mouse enabled add event listener that the text changes to blue. You can adjust the colors and such in the action script panel, but if you have it on default, it should turn blue. So make sure that these are turning blue if you're having an issue. And if all else fails, you can always just double check your work by looking at my example here. Anyway, that wraps up this action script tutorial. I have more coming up. I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you next time.